Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, introducing you to my Dark Souls video walkthrough. We're now moving into Sen's Fortress and going to be taking on the Iron Golem. So I believe that this is the first real challenging area of the game. And when I say really challenging, that's not to diminish the value of the previous areas, it's just to say, once you know your way down Blight Town, there's nothing that actually kills you enemy-wise, because the enemies are all pretty simple. It's just so much the poison and the culmination of the frame rate and everything that, that gets in the way, or the falls. The, the biggest thing that kills you in Blight Town is fall die. Like, you fall off of everything, it's, it's, it's very silly. Uh, the Undead, Berg and Parish are challenging until you know how to get through them and the enemies can kill you but you'll learn them pretty quick and once you get the Drake Sword you deal with them pretty quick. So the area is not so much challenging as it is an introduction to the challenge. Uh, this place, if you're using the Drake Sword, this is the first area that the Drake Sword's really going to diminish in its value, which I've used twice in this commentary, I don't know why I keep rushing back on that. And you'll notice I died in this place during my recording because I don't have a bow, so I can't shoot this guy. And sometimes if you get unlucky, he'll hit you with lightning and the lightning will stun you into one of the blades and the blade will knock you off. And that's exactly what happened. So when you're coming through this area, either have your fireballs ready to throw at him or shoot him with a bow from a distance. He takes a few, but he'll go down pretty quick. And... Whenever you see these plates on the floor, it means that they are a trap, so you need to be very careful. Because the traps do some sinister damage, and some serious, serious hit points will be removed, so you want to be very careful. Uh, this first area too, your first time through, these ball boulders are going to be falling down this avenue, so be careful of these as well. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if he's going to rush down for me, but he doesn't, so I decide to go through the boss fog. Even though it's not a boss fog, it's a standard fog. Uh, that right there, the arrows shoot from behind you, so if you sprint forward, it sometimes lures the lizard guy forward and he'll take a few hits. It doesn't always work. Right, normally if you want to progress the level, you would go up instead of down after the boulder goes from the door. But I'm going to show you where to get the next powerful weapon, just in case you don't have a, a Black Knight weapon and your Drake Sword is starting to get a little bit stale. Uh, this chest here, you'll notice, if you looked on the far right, the chain was facing towards me. The curve of the chain was facing the far side, and the end of the chain pointed towards me. If you see that, it's a mimic. Do not open the chest, beat the chest up, and then get the item. If the chain is curved towards you and pointing the other side, it's fine. It's a normal chest, but from now on, you're going to see those mimics popping up. And a little funny side note here for people that are interested... I died to my first Mimic on the playthrough of this guide, and I've beat this game 10 plus times and never ever once been eaten by a Mimic, but uh, a friend of mine had just got the game and he was playing through, we were in party chat and I was talking to him while I was recording, it was the first time I've ever recorded while talking to a friend, because I don't know about your guys, but I can't play for shit when I'm talking, I really can't, I can only do really one or the other. I can talk a little bit while playing, but I can't hold a conversation that requires, you know, a detailed thought process because I just go into autopilot and my autopilot's really shit. Now watch my playthrough of this game if you're interested because I suffer there too. <laughs> but I was just talking to him, I was in zombie mode, I was going through the Duke's archives, I went to the chest, I've, I've hit that chest every single time and boom. It started eating me and, you know, it killed me. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, but <laughs> it's just how it works. So, you'll notice there's a difference between this big guy and the cobra-headed guy. Cobras will have more arms, they've got flamberge weapon, and they also fire electricity at you. Uh, this guy here can be a nuisance. You'll notice I do actually have a bow, but I don't have enough arrows to kill two of these things. So, I think I only use the bow on this one, because he's the, the, the biggest threat in this area. This is the thinnest platform to walk across, and it is also the one that probably kills the most people when they're inexperienced. But, now he's dead. Uh, the pattern of these blades is there's too close a space and then too close. When I first played, I don't know if it was my depth perceptions or if I was just tired, but I couldn't see the pattern. I couldn't understand how he got through it. I just kind of tried to run and it knocked me off a lot. So you, you want to avoid stupid decisions like that. 
First thing I'm showing you here is how to get to the secret bonfire. Just drop over this edge. Do not run off the edge. Do not jump off the edge or you might miss it. Because this bonfire is a lifesaver. And if you don't know about it, it sucks. But that was me mixing up my pyromances, tuning Great Combustion, which is a fantastic spell. There's me putting the pyromancy on so I can actually use it. And you'll notice that there was the sound of a pot smashing when I went for the, the bonfire. Do you see that fella over there? He's the guy rolling boulders down, which is making this place nice and fun to traverse. Well, there's a, a, another guy just like him, but he's firing, he's throwing those pots. Did you see the explosion of fire? He's throwing those at you. And anywhere where you see the black stains that I've just passed there, that means he can throw the pot there. And there's a couple of areas where you can throw it where it doesn't seem like you should be able to, but you can, so be really careful. In my experience, if you get hit by the fire, you generally don't get out, unless you stack poise, and stacking poise this early on is difficult to do. But just keep making your way around. This is a very quick way through Sense Fortress, so don't be expecting me to, you know, go and play with Ricard and mess around with the mini tower knight and everything. Because I'm just not going to do it. I'm full business mode on this run. Up here is the guy throwing the pots. If you don't kill him before fighting the boss, he will throw pots at you while you fight the boss. Never a good situation to be in. And this guy's also extremely good at punching you through the wall, so be really careful. Did you see how his hand went through the graphics? Uh, there's a couple strategies for this fella. Run in and smack him, then run away and wait for him to do his attack and then do it again. Or, you might get lucky and he'll do the flurry. If he does the flurry, he does about 7 or 8 attacks and then he bows down. When he bows down, he gives you about 10 to 15 seconds to beat him up. And he's pretty strong. He's got quite a lot of life, so it can take a while to kill him, but he's not too bad. And you can shoot him with arrows. Uh, the first time I beat him, on my first time through the game, I shot him with arrows from this doorway. Just shot him in the hand. Nice and cheesy, but it does work. It just takes quite a while. And this is taking quite a while because he's not doing the paddy. There's the punch. There's his lovely little growl. And I think that killed him, yeah. This weapon is really powerful though, so it does make sense. And I have a look around as I always do, even though there's rarely anything on that roof. And then I'm probably going to go directly through to the boss fog. So, if you're in human form, to my right there is a room that is just off this, this central chamber. And you can summon a guy called Tarkus, who is really good at this boss. He He's using a great sword, he does massive damage. His AI is a bit dumb, so he can be kind of passive, but... Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to show you him in the fight on my playthrough. But this is going to be me smashing the, this guy, because I'm so strong I can do it. So the, the technique here is to stay in between his legs, attack him to try and stun him, and then when you stun him, just, just keep attacking. Now, this weapon is so powerful that it stuns like a fiend, and this guy never gets up once he goes down. If you're using the Lightning Spear or the Drake Sword, this is a much longer fight, because you do not have the same kind of strength. But stay between his legs. If he goes to reach above his head, he's going to grab in between his legs, so you need to move away from that one. But everything else, uh, very similar to the Tower Knight from Demon Souls, you shouldn't have too much trouble with him. The, the main fear is getting thrown off the map. It happens, it's just a fact of Dark Souls. It sucks, but you need to suck it up. And uh, you should be fine. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. You take care now.